Welcome to another episode of Cocktails and, out of the and, and Curtain Calls. I'm sorry if I just surprised our two guests. I'm Matt Austin. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We're still working. <laughs> and I'm Beth Young. And for the next half an hour, we are going to talk with Katie Diamond and Aaron Craig from ACT. And we'll give them an opportunity to explain their roles there. Um, and they are in the midst or coming down the home stretch of a very rapid rapidly produced and directed production of the concert version of Into the Woods. So welcome. welcome. It's really nice to have you here. Um, and I'm really excited about what you're doing. I think I've been so impressed with, with the generation of work that's come out of ACT and the real, um, the real effort to stay relevant and involved and engaged effective and really great stuff. So we're looking Thank forward to hearing about this. Thank you. Well, it's so nice to be here. Um, we are, I'm thrilled to see you again. I feel like it's been forever since I, since I laid eyes on you too. So i um, really happy to see you and yeah, we're, uh, we're gearing up for uh, our opening night of Into the Woods, which in concert, which is on Wednesday. Uh, and yes, as you said, it's been a very fast and furious production. I can let Aaron talk about that a little bit, but, um, but thank you for saying that, that we have, you know, that you've been impressed with what we've been doing over the last year, because we've tried really hard to, uh, you know, have some content for our audiences to keep people engaged and inspired by theater, by music, um, by the arts. So we were glad that it's, it's uh, uh, resonated with you at least, and hopefully your audiences, what we've been able to do. Um, we did have, you know, as full of a season as we could this year, you know, it, it looks nothing like we had planned, of course, but we were able to do a, a live in-person production in the fall with myself and Dan Levine, artistic director, uh, which was really fun and, and interesting since neither of us- and well great. I hadn't been on stage in that capacity. You know, I shifted over to this, this other world of the executive director kind of producer uh, world. And so I hadn't been in, uh, you know, in a show as a character in a show for gosh, 10 years when I did that. I was like, okay, here we go. Let's put wow. on a show. Wow, so, the, but it was, no kinks. That was great. Fun. You were great. Yeah, you were just great. We both came to see it and just loved yeah. it. Just I'm loved so it. I'm so glad. It was really fun to be able to do that. Our audiences seem to be really um, excited by that. And I think just having something to go to during this time was really um, was really nice for our community. Uh, and then we were able to do a, a, a live stream production of Snapshots uh, in February, right, Erin? Which um, was, was just captured on film. It was not live in our theater. Uh, and it was a totally new experience for, for us, um, but it was received very well. and. And Aaron might have some information about what's happening with that. It will have another life after ACT. So, um, you know, so all in all, we feel like it's been a super challenging year, right, Aaron? <laughs> but um, a, a rewarding year in many in in many ways for us as a theater and a company. So, so thank you for that. Yeah, no, congratulations. Thank you. And I know, um, you know, I spoke with Dan uh, earlier about Into the Woods, and he talked about his vision for it over many years, and and having to alter that. And I'm sure both of you can speak to the accommodations that were made to get this on the stage. It sounds from his description of what's happening, very vibrant and full of motion, but it's mm -hmm. not, it's, it, and a full production. It's the entire score and script, but, but uh, different. And, and maybe you could just talk to us a little bit about but what is Before different. you get yeah. into that, can I, can I point out the fact that you both have coordinated trees behind you? Um, I don't know if that was on purpose. Uh, I'm just saying. I don't know. If this was... <laughs> We're outdoorsy types. Okay. No, this is, this That's is funny. My, this is my spot in my house. So I always have the tree background. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so Perfect. funny. And this is the office. And so the background are the trees in the office. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> funny. Well, Erin, you can talk about uh, the in the woods, uh, you know. That, that is happening since you are the producing director of that show right now. Give your <laughs> sense about that. Sorry, that was somebody else coming in and out here. So they're still working this on the place. other side of the door. Um, yeah, so it is, yes, Dan definitely had to, to do a major pivot, his favorite word for this year, right? Um, and make, make into the woods, he still wanted to do it, right? It was really important to still do something that um, audiences recognized as we were welcoming them 
into the theater again. You know, we are at a 50% capacity. So it's a new experience for us to have more people in the building and to sort of just, but we're excited as you can see from the tent behind me, there are tents already up all around the property so that there's lots of space for people and we're expecting a wonderful week ahead weather-wise, which thank goodness. <laughs> um, but as we've been working through, Dan had this idea to bring in partnerships from uh, surrounding, the, from the town basically, and from people in the surrounding area in the Fairfield County area. And so he reached out to uh, Matt over at Bart's Tree Service and said, hey, I have this great idea. Would you bring and come and erect a real tree in the theater? And so we have this magical sort of fantasiful, fantasiful, is that a word? Um, a treescape, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you, um, it it, on good. the stage. And it's gorgeous. And they actually just, they, they searched for the best tree, the right tree that were, you know, and then put it all together and brought it in. And it took, a, it took over a day to actually do it, just like solid load in and, and making it happen. So it's things like that. It's, um, you know, every every actor has their, every singer has their own unique space on the stage, you know? And so uh, I won't give too much away, but it's it's just, they're, they're all gonna be dressed in sort of concert wear, right? But with a, a flair of their character, so to speak. Um, you know, we're just trying to continue to really embrace what the story is about because Into the Woods, in, as, it, as it stands as a show, is so much about family and about how do you get through things that are difficult it's just like it's the perfect show to be doing right now and to be able to hear these glorious musicians from the RSO the Ridgefield Symphony Orchestra who we're partnering with on this is just extraordinary in combination with these Broadway performers who are literally going to without the encumbrance of all of the other things get to stand there and and you know of course not just stand but be there and truly truly get to sing this glorious music it's um it's really exciting. I have not yet been able to actually be in the room for more than like two minutes at a time to hear anything, but um, we can hear it out in the lobby and it's just, it's fantastic. So it's really exciting. And it's so many people on the stage, you know, it's an orchestra of 13 with a real conductor. Brian Perry is our real conductor, um, music supervisor here at ACT. And then there's the cast of 17. And it's just magnificent, you know? So it's, it's been really interesting to see how you can do it. And of course, with a concert, you do it very quickly. So <laughs> we've literally rehearsed for one week and then we perf perform for eight performances, one of which is our gala performance on Saturday evening. So it's our, we ended up putting it all together into our annual gala and our spring performance all in one. And, you know, by next week at this time, the whole thing will be over. <laughs> it's amazing, it's amazing. But it's, you know, it's fantastic. The cast is, uh, man, most of the cast has come from New York um, and there are a couple of local uh, favorites in the cast, I don't know. We should, we should, you know, announce them, I so to speak, but Ira Joe Fisher is playing the narrator. Oh, so nice. we're excited to have him with us. Um, and Daniela Sikora is playing, um, singing, I should say multiple roles. She's very, she's very fun. She's very fun in these roles. Um, and then hometown favorite and obviously New York star, Juliet Lambert Pratt is back uh, and playing the role of the baker's wife. So that's really fun. And there are many other cast members who are back from previous uh, productions as well as some new, you know, new, new people to the, to the theater. So it's very, it's been very exciting and fast and furious, as you said, but um, fun to sort of look at how you can make something work in a time, you know, what do they say? Limitations breed. Creativity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Definitely wonderful. Back. That's <laughs> wonderful. I think that um, it, you know, I think what is so ex there's a, an appetite to get back into the theater for people who love the theater, people who want to be, we're tired of streaming or whatever we want to call it and people just to be in the place. And, and then I know when Matt and I went the night to see uh, the last five years, just, just sitting in the seat was so, so soothing and so comforting. And then, you know, to be presented with this, 
really, it was wonderfully done, just wonderful. I couldn't say enough about it. Um, and and uh, just felt like, oh, it's possible. I mean, this we can still do this. And it was really wonderful. So this is exciting and an opportunity, as you say, to do something different with something that a lot of people may be familiar with and then to get to see something different. And that's, that's exciting and inviting as well. So good for you. That's yeah. excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. So you say that in a week, a week from now, it's all over. Is that over? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so what's up next? What do you, what is, what does the rest of your season look like moving forward? What have you planned for? Erin, do you want to talk about it? <laughs> I was like, which way we talk? So, yeah, so this, uh, so Into the Woods in Concert is the sort of the final production, so to speak, of the season. Um, and we, uh, we are, I'm looking at my calendar on the wall here. We are moving into um, a little bit, we're gonna have the theater available in June for um, some artists that are developing some new work. And we're really excited about that. It's very, you know, just, just giving them the space still, um, you know, not about public performance necessarily, just about giving them the opportunity because part of the mission here is to be able to nurture new works and have opportunity for artists to still be able to create. And they're so hungry right now, just like you were saying with the audiences. I mean, I'm, I'm astounded by just how, I'm not astounded, but I am astounded by just how much we're get, hearing from artists around saying, okay, we just wanna be on a stage. Can we just use the stage? Can we just come in for a little while? You know, and so it's like, we have an opportunity with this gorgeous building that Katie and Dan and Brian made happen and put together and built that, you know, we can allow artists to actually be a part of it in even just a small way in their development process. So that's really fun. Um, so that'll be a brief, you know, little, little opportunity in June. And then we have our education programs coming up. Um, and so our summer conserv teen conservatory and youth camp and performance camp. And Katie, you talk about those. Yeah, well, We've probably talked about our, our education program before, but it's a big part of our mission at ACT is to really engage young people in the art of theater and the business of theater and all things uh, related to being a part of this industry. Um, and so we have throughout the year, we have a lot of different classes. Um, this year obviously looked a little different, mostly online stuff, but uh, we not only do classes for voice and acting and dance and all that, you know, performance-based classes, but we also do behind the scenes type classes. We do master classes with technicians, lighting designers, uh, costume designers. We've done master classes all about, you know, what does it mean to produce a show? What, what does it mean to be a producer? You know, so we kind of want our, our kids that are coming through our program to really understand the business of making theater. So, um, you know, with that said, what we do in the summer is really a performance based uh, camp for kids as young as seven up through 18. Uh, we have two different camps, so, uh, or two different opportunities. One is a camp that's for the younger kids that are age seven to I think 12 we go up to, is 11 or 12. And then we have a conservatory that's really more, uh, we, we try really hard not to call it a camp. You saw, you saw me correct myself because we really treat the, uh, the kids in that program like they are in a professional production. It's not a camp. They have a rehearsal schedule. They are meant to be, you know, they show up five minutes before their call. They sign in, they are in a show, they're in a production. And they, are, they have a director, they have a music director, they have a choreographer, they have an, a, a stage manager and an assistant stage manager. I mean, it's a, it's a, full, a full on deal. They do a full show. Um, so that's a really great opportunity for those who are interested in performing and maybe continuing on to perform in college or beyond to really understand what it feels like and looks like to be part of a professional production on a professional equity stage, you know, using a turntable, using all the tech that we use in the theater. So um, it's a two week, uh, each of each of the, um, the, the camp and the conservatory are each two weeks, and then they do end with a, a full production at the end. So usually parents can come see and we have friends and, and family members uh, to see it where it's still up in the air, I think this year, whether we'll be able to invite people in to see the show at the end of the, um, of the camps, but we're hoping so. Uh, but it's a really fun opportunity the kids love it. We have guest uh, directors that come in and, and actually Dan directs the conservatory 
uh, program so that the, those kids really get to see what it's like to work with a real, you know, seasoned director. So it's a lot of fun and a lot of hard work for these kids. It's amazing what they pull off in two weeks. I'm telling you, it's, that's you know, a, that's a cram session. So let me is. just ask you, um, in Godspell, you had all the children there. Were many of them from the conservatory in the program? Well, Yes, a lot of them had come through our program uh, in some capacity. So we also have a choir, youth choir. Uh, we have we have a, a variety of different opportunities for kids. Um, so the, those kids that you saw in Godspell, probably most of them, I don't know, two thirds of them had we knew before um, through and is you know some of our programming. Um, you know, it's a small-ish town. So a lot of the kids who are interested in, in and really interested in theater do come through our doors for, for education. Um, but, you know, we had full auditions for the, the kid. I mean, we used all local kids in Godspell, but they all auditioned. There were no, you know, we didn't cast anybody that had been through our program before without an audition. I mean, they all came through and auditioned and we really just selected those kids who, you know, proved to us that they could commit to what we were asking and, and really you know, that could act and sing what was required of them for the show. And I, I thought those kids, I mean, I think they really made that show. It was, they, they it were was, really amazing. There were a lot of things that made that show. The, <laughs> the way it was, I mean, I was deeply moved by that performance, Good. but the kids were just, and not, I don't want to say scene stealers or something. So it, it, they were just captivating. Yeah. And the talent was amazing. I mean, it really, they came across as educated, Good. which is what, you know, that they, they were very professional um, and very invested in what they were doing. So it was very, it was really impressive. Well, there's something, really there, there's something about seeing a group of kind of that, those innocent kids on stage being just so vulnerable and in the moment of, of the piece of theater that is just so, it is, it's, it, they, it, they steal the scene without doing anything, you know, just, right. just being those kind of innocent children that you're just drawn to that, you know, on stage. So I'm, I'm glad that, I'm glad that you liked that. We, we loved having yeah. them in that production. Yeah, I can imagine. I can, and it really, again, the, the whole set lent itself to that kind of, it was just, it, it was almost like Dickensian, you know, in, in a way, yeah. the kids, yeah. but it was, it was just fabulous. So, so, Good. so Thank what you're teaching them is working. It's looking great. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to point out, and I think I read this correctly. So the children's programs this summer, one is Into the Woods Junior and the other mm -hmm. is a new work. I really, I, I love yeah. that mm -hmm. because it, you talk about the developing of the new work, but also exposing a new, a whole new generation, the next generation of theater performers to, hey, you're going to be the people making this. These are the people yeah. right now. Um, yeah. So I love that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, it really is important to us to, for, the, for when, when kids leave our program in whatever way they were involved with us, that they really understand, you know, how theater is, is developed and, and the importance of the, you know, the steps that are taken um, as we go through the process of developing these new shows. And, um, you know, we, we ask them to be a part of, of all of that. When we, you know, not this year, but the year before we did a conservatory program during the school year that was a 10 week long session that was in the fall of that year. So that was when we were doing a Vita, I believe, right? Yes, that was a Vita. Um, and so we actually had the kids taking master classes with some of the performers that were in Avita, with the music director from Avita. We had them part of the, they came and watched some rehearsals. They came and watched some of our tech rehearsals. And, you know, the, and then the next year we did the same thing with, um, so that was three years ago. I can't keep, keep my ears straight now with this COVID thing. Um, and then the next year we did the same thing with Little Shop of Horrors. So we've, we've been trying to do a conservatory program in the school year that um, that's kind of connected to whatever the fall show is. Um, so what was kind of interesting when we did Little Shop of Horrors, they were actually doing it um, off Broadway in New York at the same time. So we were actually with the kids, we were able to have them come, come to our tech rehearsals, watch our production. Then we took all of them to the city and we watched the production there together. And then we had a big old conversation about the differences in direction and production and, and how was that more effective or how was this more effective and, and what, you know, we just talked about the differences in, in making theater and, you know, 
and the creativity involved in making those different decisions as you're producing and directing a show. And so it's really, it's really great to be able to involve them kind of in all the aspects of, of the making of theater, which I know I keep saying, but it's just so important to us that they understand that. And doing the conservatory program in that way that it, when it's connected to one of our main stage productions is really just I mean, I, I think it takes it to a, a whole different level because they, it, they're not just in a classroom. They are actually in the room where it happens. <laughs> and they're, you know, and they're really learning by watching these professionals do what they do, you know, um, and then being able to have a conversation about it and have their voice heard about what they saw and how they felt is really, I mean, I, I think that that is a really effective way for us to kind of get through to them and educate them, you know. And to engage them for whatever their future brings. These are our future right. audiences too. So, so it just Absolutely. to get to get them to that getting, place. And getting them to be critical thinkers about theater and art is, you know, it's important for us as we as we as they become the next uh, generation of ticket buyers. But it's also important for them as they just go into the world doing whatever they do to be able to really think in those terms, you know, and to really be able to sit back and and analyze these different situations and whether it's art or or anything else, you know. But to be able to really kind of have those thoughts and conversations with themselves and others. I think is really important for them, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. I agree. Well, good for you. That's that's it great. Was, it was supposed to be. Uh, there was there were plans to have the kids involved with Into the Woods, of course, right? Children will listen and all of that, and it would have just been so lovely. And we we held on to that until the very last moment, and we're like, there's no way with this current regulations and the number of people and all that. But uh, you know. I know that's in Dan's next version of the show, there will be children. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yes. look forward to that too. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and what, what in terms of the next season or, the, or what are there plans being made now? Beth is really they... trying to get the scoop. Yeah, really I want to, I, I want to have it here. here first. <laughs> That's it. I love it. Well, <laughs> we're not quite ready to give details. We are in the works and yes, we are, we are planning and uh, working on getting the rights, of course, for the, for the projects that we want to do. Um, you know, we are planning to to open in the fall with you know the next season in the fall as we as as we normally do, um, and sort of follow it through the year. But um, we're also looking at all of the pieces, right? And what do you do when there's still we we're in such a good place, but you know, in the world and yet we just don't know all the details yet as to what's to come. So we're really hoping that we'll be able to be back at, at a full capacity in the fall. That's the goal. Um, but we'll, you know, we just keep t taking one step in front of the other. And that's the, that's the, every day is a different day. And, you know, but we're really hoping. And I think with having nine people in the house for into the woods and concert it's gonna it's gonna reform a lot of that and to your point earlier too beth it's astounding how wonderful the reception has been it's like it's we sold out before we even could put other performances on sale i mean we started with i think five or six performances total, including the gala, which was supposed to be two of them, and ultimately decided that because of the demand that we needed to open up more performances. And then finally, in the end, we said, you know what? People want to see, they want to be in the theater. And maybe yeah. it's more important to have more people in the theater at the limited capacity than it is to do another gala night. And so we decided to open it up at a regular price. And so we're at eight performances now, seven of which are open to, you know, general general admission, regular price tickets, um, and then our one gala performance. But it's, we can't keep the tickets in the box office. It's been really you, so That's wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. If people yeah, want to and get tickets, are there any left? Uh, this will probably go up tonight. So. <laughs> My box office is going to kill me. They're going to oh. be like, "We don't have any tickets." No, we are. We are currently. Um, we currently are taking a wait list for all of the performances. Um, the so performances begin. I think Katie mentioned uh, Wednesday. So we start Wednesday matinee at two o'clock, and then we run through Sunday 
Um, we have a five show weekend. We have a Friday uh, and Friday night. So it's Wednesday, two performances, Thursday, one uh, at seven, Friday at seven, Saturday at two and seven. That Saturday night is our gala. That is completely sold out. There's definitely not a, a, a seat in that one. Um, but you can check out our live, our, our not our live, our silent auction items. That's all going to be released tonight or tomorrow. So by the time this comes out, hopefully everyone will check out our silent auction items, some really fun things, including some cakes by Katie, Katie's Cakes. Um, uh, oh, yeah. And then we close out with Sunday two and seven uh, performances. So yes, but certainly call the box wow. office. All of the seating is being done uh, in real time. So as a new, you know, as a new group purchases or, or shifts or something like that, we're having, we're moving people around to ensure that everybody feels safe and comfortable in the theater. So yeah. So call the box office. <laughs> uh, the, okay. That's, a, that's the word that we will spread and we have the information. So that can go out as well with, with the great. posting here. Thank well, you. Thank you so much for coming on. This thank is you. great. I think what you're doing is so exciting. And I, I'm just thrilled for you and for the entire theater community, because it takes somebody to start and get the ball rolling. And then people, you know, people catch on and, and, and also the appetite bill. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. And thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Always. You guys are always yes. so lovely and I love some eager, I love some eager theater goers. So you guys, you're my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. We love coming to your shows and, and just really stand in awe of what you do and what you've accomplished thank through you. this really challenging time. You just kept kept things moving and that's so impressive. So thank you. Yes. Well, and so have you. So thank you as well, because, you know, you've been with us this entire year. So thank you. <laughs> I got to say, you know, and this, I don't want this, this just, I don't want this to sound like a bad thing. You've been most of our episodes this year. And I've loved that because <laughs> it means you're doing stuff and there is stuff to be seen. So I'm so thankful for you guys. Uh, um, good. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Can't wait and to we see you guys. Have, yeah, in person, in person. We were there. We were there for for the last five years, um, and loved snapshots. Both of us loved. Snapshots. You can't get tickets into the woods. I heard they're sold out. So yeah, <laughs> I wonder if I might know someone. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much you it's again. been wonderful having yeah. you thank we wish you all have a great weekend thanks thanks yes, we'll thank talk you. To you take care take bye. care bye-bye good night thanks good night